Hello, I'm going to go over how to run an IRT model using R. I will specifically go over the R code and some of the output produced, but I'll also give a brief explanation of what the model is. So IRT, it stands for Item Response Theory. Now what it does is it scales examinees on some latent continuous variable or attribute. Now it's different from the test score because uh, the latent attribute is not directly measurable, but you can estimate it. And it's also different from test score because two examinees with the same test score can have different abilities. Um, and also this latent attribute can be anything. It can be math ability, it can be depression, anxiety, anything that's tested via some test or diagnostic assessment. So for this example, I'm going to use an the basically a IQ data set from the website openpsychometrics.org. It has some raw data um, and I use this IQ data set. This data set uh, responses to a, a specific test and this test, this IQ test, it's actually similar to RPMs or Raven progressive matrices where they attempt to gauge IQ based on how examinees respond to a series of matrices where they have to recognize patterns. Uh, this is an example of one of the items. So it's all about trying to recognize this pattern right here and selecting from a series of options that best completes this uh, matrix. And you can see here it's going to be another spade um, and that, that would answer the, the question correctly. And uh, this is actually question number two, but the items get progressively more difficult. So this is where I attained the data set and I basically just try to load the data set. Um, I just download it to my desktop and I, and then using this code file that choose, you can locate it onto your desktop. Um, after I've located it, because uh, I followed in the folder, it tells you how to, uh, which ones are the correct answer. Um, it's a, it's basically a 25 item data set. So only first I selected only the first 25 items. Then I wanted for the IRT model I'm using, it's going to be uh, binary response, one meaning correct, zero meaning incorrect. So in this specific data set, 10 means correct and all the other numbers means incorrect. So I set it to zero. And uh, so I will basically run this code right now. And the name of the data set is going to be IQ bin. Now, first I'm going to, uh, I already installed the LTM package. Uh, now I'm just going to call it. And my goal here is I'm going to fit three different types of IRT models, the Rosh 1PL model, the 2PL model, and the 3PL model. So the 1PL model has one parameter, um, just the difficulty parameter. In this Rosh model here, um, the second discrimination parameter is held constant and you set it uh, constant using the length of the test plus one and we're setting it to a constant of one here. And the function is Rosh. So I'm just gonna run this uh, Rosh model right here. Uh, it's referred to as the Rosh model, it's well, very well known literature is that, but it's, it's you can think of it as the one parameter model. Now I'm gonna run the 2PL model, which estimates two parameters. The difficulty parameter as long as it's a discrimination parameter. Now it's no longer held constant. Um, and as you can see here, it's basically the data set and Z1 indicating that it's one factor. And the 3PL model, uh, 
uh, before for the 2PL model, the function I'm using LTM, 3PL model, it's TPM. And type as latent trait right here. Now, and also uh, when I said earlier, Z1 is equal to one factor, meaning that it's a one factor unidimensional model. Not, not necessarily the actual number of parameters estimated. So now I'm going to, well, now you might think, well, which, which model is better? Well, it depends on the data set. And a good way to, if you want to gauge which model you should use for your data set and test, um, you can actually just compare the coefficient or parameter estimates produced. So I'm going to look at all three of them. I'm going to call them via coefficients. Let me maximize this. And as you can see here, um, let's scroll back up. So uh, for the 1PL model, I set discrimination to 1. This is the difficulty parameter here, the first column's difficulty parameter. Uh, the second column is the discrimination parameter, which is held constant. And the third column is the probably of getting an item correct uh, for the average uh, person uh, taking this test. So for the difficulty parameter, it's kind of like a, it's a z-score, so it's anywhere from negative 3 to 3, 3 indicating it's difficult, negative 3 indicating it's easy. And, and you can also see here, um, it's the probability of getting it right. So it's a very easy item probably is gonna, getting it right for the average person is going to be uh, pretty, average person at the average ability is going to be pretty high. Now let's compare this to the 2PL model. So now you can see here, uh, one good thing to look at is um, the discrimination parameter, which was before held constant at 1. But immediately I see that a lot of these parameters are not uh, set at 1. So right off the bat, you can, you pretty much know that, or you get a sense that the discrimination parameter is worth looking into and it shouldn't be held constant. So now it, I'm leaning more towards selecting the 2PL model versus the 1PL model. Now with the 3PL model, it looks at difficulty discrimination along with guessing. Now, well, let, actually, let me go back. Let me actually describe what these parameters are. Um, difficulty um, is basically how hard, uh, how hard the item is. Discrimination is how well an item discriminates between high and low ability examinees. And guessing, which is included in the 3PL model, is basically the for the low ability examinees what's the probability of them getting an item correct. It's basically for the 2PL model, it's zero for the 2PL model, but here um, we're trying to estimate guessing. And when looking at the 3PL model, you can see these are very low, They're all of them are very close to being zero. And because of the because of that, there it, all these guessing parameters are so low. I'm actually leaning more towards the 2PL model uh, as the model that that I can just use for this data set. However, there's another way to gauge uh, or determine which model you should you can use is basically using the ANOVA function, and we can compare model fit um, the Roche model, which is nested within the 2PL model. and basically look and see whether this likelihood ratio test is significant. If it's significant, then the 2PL model shows an improvement over the Roche model. And now we can also do this for the uh, 2PL and 3PL model. And based on the likelihood ratio test, the 3PL model shows a significant improvement over the 2PL model. However, just from observing, even though this is significant, it's basically indicating that 3PL model is more, more ideal. Just by looking at the parameters, you, you can also get a sense 
that there's also justification just running with the two pale model and just selecting a more parsimonious model. Um, in addition, there's also research indicating that the guessing parameter is less stable. So there, there's justification for both the three PL and um, just using the two PL model. So let's further examine the two PL model. We'll use the two PL model to test out a few other functions but let's look at the parameter estimates once again using COEF on the 2PL model. And what you want to see for the discrimination parameter specifically is values of one or higher. And you can see a lot of them are. Um, you can settle on 0.8 or higher. I've seen that is also acceptable. Now, 0.7 more marginal. The for the most part, most of them look pretty good, except for Q21 and Q22. Those are really bad discrimination parameters in that they these items don't seem to differentiate between the high and low ability examinings very well. So let's look at the item fit function. So what this does is it returns the goodness of fit for each one of the items using a chi-squared test. And let's let it run. It takes a little bit. And what you, it, it, it's a good spot check for misfitting items. Anything that's significant is an item that doesn't show good fit. So you know, this adds more information and it's a good spot check for for these sorts of items or troubling items. But Q21, Q22 seem to be doing pretty good. Now let's look at the plot function for the item characteristic curve. Now you can see here, um, what you want to see is, uh, well first it's the ability on the x-axis and probability of correctness on the y-axis. Um, what you want to see is for low ability, probability of correctness, the lines to be down here and lines to be up here for high ability and probability of correctness. You want to see the high ability examinees with very high probabilities of correctness. And these are called S-curves because the thing that'll connect these to, um, it's a S-like curve. And you can see here, Q22 very clearly seems to, even for high ability examinees, to have very low probability of correctness. And for that plot function, if you, because there are a lot of items here, you can narrow down and just look at one item, let's just say if you're interested in item six, and you want to see the S curve, you, you can do that. Um, now let's look at the test information function. So this is, it combines the item information function for all the items on the test. Um, all you have to do is set items equal to zero here. And what it does is shows for each, uh, for the ability estimates, the amount of information you're getting. And what you want to see is this normal curve like feature, this bell curve like feature around zero. You don't want to see much skewness and you can tell that you're getting good amount of information across um, all levels of ability. And finally, what you want to, what you might also want to look at is the actual ability estimates for each one of the examinees. And this is done with the factor.scores function. Let's look at that. Let's run it for the, it's produced by the 2PL model. And let's set it to EST for estimates. And let's look at um, EST dollar sign score dot dat dollar sign z1 and this will give us the ability estimates for the first five examinees. So you can add this little function right here just to look at 
because I you don't want the complete list of 400 examinees. Let's just look at the first five, and and you can see here um, that their the ability estimates for first five examinees. It's they're they're pretty low. Um, so these are the first few are on the lower end. Finally, I'm going to run just a couple of bits of code. And actually, I should have done this first, and it's the assumption check. Um, one of the main assumptions of the models I've been running is that they are unidimensional, meaning that they're only measuring one factor or latent attribute. So what I just ran is a two-factor model for the uh, 2PL IRT model. Z1 plus Z2 will, will run uh, using the LTM function will run the two-factor model. After, now, now that it's completed, I'm going to compare it using the ANOVA function, the two-factor 2PL model to the one-factor 2PL model. And the likelihood ratio test shows it's significant, meaning that the assumption was violated and the data are likely, the, the test is, measuring more than likely measuring more than one attribute or more than one factor meaning that it's been violated now you do it's never there are a few other ways to measure unidimensionality and with real data a lot of times it's never completely unidimensional but uh, this does show that the that the assumption was violated you you can sort of make some argument here and maybe that you can conduct a few other unidimensional tests, unidimensionality tests. But this one was a quick way to just see. Um, I know that this IQ test is similar to the RPM measure, and that that has been shown to have a few factors in it, even though it's trying to measure some latent continuous variable or. Uh, is trying to measure intelligence in, in a sort of pure way w without um, a lot of cultural loading. But um, but yeah, but this is like a really quick way to run a unidimensionality test, and it was violated. And here uh, you would recommend using a multidimensional model. But I just wanted to go through all the R code at least. And I would like to thank Sparks89 for giving me the idea for this video topic. And if anyone has any ideas, just let me know and I can do them. So thank you for watching the video. Let me know what you think.